Hey guys, and welcome to Life with Aprons. Today, I want to show you how to make tallow from beef fat. Stay tuned. All right, before we dive into how to make tallow, let's talk about some of the benefits of tallow. We need to go back a little ways in order to really understand how tallow got a bad name, how animal fats in general got a bad name. In the early 1900s, Procter and Gamble came up with this idea. They decided to take on the animal fats by producing their own alternative. They took their toxic waste, cotton seeds, and turned it into oil through hydrogenation. It became known as Crisco, and we still have Crisco today in the grocery store. And it's very deceiving because not only did they label it as an alternative for animal fats, but they also gave it the exact consistency and made it look pure as if it was a pure oil, which is further from the truth. They even got scientists on board to do research that would support this idea that animal fats were bad for you. If you look and you research into these studies, you will find that there are a lot of holes in the studies, they are inaccurate and they are biased, and they were all there to support Procter & Gamble's desire for more money by using toxic waste. Now, let's talk about the great things with tallow, the great things about animal fats in general. If you are interested in learning more about the way doctors and the medical community in general has deceived us about animal fats, I encourage you to check out two books that have really been influential in my journey to health. I always talk about health and how the, the best way to be healthy is to get as close to nature as possible. What is close to nature? Well, animal fats are close to nature. Um, growing your own food is obviously close to nature. You want to question anything that is not close to nature. The first book is Nourishing Traditions. If you haven't read this book, I highly recommend it. Not only does it have recipes inside here, but a wealth of information in the margins in the very beginning as to why animal fats, why raw milk, why getting your food from the earth is so good for you. We've really gotten away from that and there's about a million diets out there. But if we look at the traditional ways they used to eat when they didn't have all these diseases, when they didn't have issues, it's really going back to getting it from the land and eating as close to nature as possible. So I highly recommend that you grab a hold of this book. It is a wealth of information. If you wanna dive in even deeper, there's a second book called The Great Cholesterol Myth. And in here, it just talks about how we have been deceived into believing that animal fats are bad for you and its relation to cholesterol. And it really is an eye opener into what truly is important for our bodies. All right, now that I've gotten through the resources, let's talk about how amazing tallow is for you. First of all, it's a very versatile animal fat, and I say that about tallow and lard. You can use it for soaps, you can use it for food, you can use it for candles. There is a lot of things that tallow can be used for, and it makes it just a great all-around thing to have in your kitchen. Secondly, animal fat is good for your body. We have to retrain our minds, as I said earlier. In fact, it is loaded with vitamins and minerals. It's great for your skin, it's great for your brain, it's great for your whole body, and it helps rebuild from the inside out. It's also an anti-inflammatory, which cannot be true for the seed oils that they are pushing on the market. I hope you can see that tallow is absolutely amazing. I always have it in my kitchen and we are gonna dive right in now and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to render tallow from beef fat. So let's get started. There's just a few things that you're going to need to render tallow and obviously the first is beef fat. 
Now, I have mentioned this before in other videos, but my husband and I, we like to get a half a cow or a fourth of a cow at a time, and we always request that we get the beef fat as well. Then I can take that beef fat and render it into tallow and use it in all sorts of things. So you're going to wanna make sure you have beef fat and make sure that it is grass-fed beef fat. We want this from healthy cows. We do not want to try to render from a cow that has had antibiotics, that has been raised on grain feed, because you're going to consume that back into your body. So wanna make sure that it's a healthy cow. You also want a crock pot. That's gonna be the easiest way to render the tallow. We're gonna cut it up and then we're gonna throw it into our crock pot and let the crock pot do all the work, which is what I love about crock pots and Instapots. Okay, so I'm gonna open up this beef fat here. Now, if you're just using this for cooking and frying and those kinds of things, you don't need to be super careful about getting the meat off of the fat. If you're going to use it in candles or if you're going to use it in soap, you probably want to get as much meat off as possible so that you don't have a beefy smell in either of those things. But for my purposes, I'm just using it in the kitchen. So I'm not going to be too particular about cutting off all the meat. Okay, I got most of the meat off of here. You can see that I still have a few spots where there is a little bit of trace of meat, but again, I'm just using it for cooking, so I'm not worried about that beefy smell. The next thing you're going to do is start cutting it up into cubes. And the reason we do this is so that it will make the rendering process a lot easier. When you throw it in the crock pot, it'll be easier for that tallow to just drip off of the fat. All right, I have my beef fat cut up and the next thing I'm gonna do is just throw it right into the crock pot. When I make tallow, I get as much beef fat as possible and then I fill up my crock pot. I usually have it filled to about right here. I'm gonna do some more beef fat in a minute, but I just wanted to show you, you throw it in the crock pot, that's pretty much it. You put the lid on and you wanna put it on low for about eight to 10 hours. Just check it to see if it is ready. And the way that you know that it is ready is that you will see all that liquid gold or tallow um, has been rendered out of the fat and the fat is sitting in it and the fat should be a little harder like cracklins. And that is what you're looking for. When it is finished, you will have those cracklins there and then you will know it's time to turn off the crock pot. Okay guys, my beef fat has been sitting in this crock pot for eight hours. It is finished. You can look on the inside and see the cracklins and tell that it is definitely done. So the next step is you wanna let it cool first, but then we're going to strain out the cracklins. If you don't let it cool, you're gonna get seriously injured because it is really hot. However, you don't want it to cool too much to where it solidifies because once it cools to a certain temperature, it will solidify. So we're gonna go ahead and strain out the cracklins. Okay, my cracklins are pretty well drained out. There's a little drippage going on, but it looks pretty good. Now, what do you do with the cracklins? Do not throw them out. You can take these cracklins, they're very flavorful. You can crumble them on dishes to give a little crunch and a little flavor. Um, we also use them as dog treats. Our dogs love them and it's a great way to train your dog with a treat. Either way, these cracklins are also really good for you. That's pretty good. Now I have this liquid here and that is your tallow. And the last thing I'm gonna do is grab a jar. I like to use a wide mouth jar because it makes it easier when I put a spoon in, I can just scoop it right out, throw it in the pan, and it just makes it a whole lot easier than having any bumps or anything that I have to get my spoon around if you have the regular mouth jars. 
Now, this jar is a WEC jar, and I highly recommend these jars. These are my favorite jars. They're a little pricier than the ball jars, but very much worth the extra money to put into them. I will put a link for those in the description. They also come with these plastic lids so that you can just pop a lid on and not always have to use the glass canning lids. I purchased several of these plastic lids separately for the purpose of storing food in these jars when I'm not using it for canning. So I also highly recommend these, these are great. I will put a link in the description for that as well. And we're just going to pour the tallow into the jar. Perfect, perfect. Okay, I am going to let this sit out until it solidifies and then I'm going to pop my lid on it and I'm ready to go. You can store this by the stove or you can store it in your pantry if you're going to use it regularly. If you're not gonna use it for a long time, I would say six months or longer, then I might store it in the fridge. I've not had a problem with my tallow going rancid. I usually leave mine right beside the stove and sometimes it takes me a couple months to get through, sometimes less than that, and it has never gone bad. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it took some of the intimidation out of making your own tallow, and I hope you learned something new. If you enjoyed it, like this video and subscribe. I don't want you to miss any more great content coming out. Thanks so much.